please help me. I recently made a proposal to a woman I love. When she was younger, she had a childhood crush on a guy who was F asterisk CK boy and a player, and she has been in love with him ever since. When they were together, contrary to your claims, they were in a relationship a couple of years ago. Her mom and her two best friends told me they were a couple. In regards to this individual, I've always had a sixth instinct, or spider sense, that he wasn't fully out of her life even though he is aware that she is with me and she says they don't interact with one another. I have never prohibited her to speak with anyone. Consequently, we just went on a trip for the holidays and New Year's Day celebrations. I had to go back to our hometown before she because, you know, I had to go back first. Because of work, she was able to stay with her parents for another week while I was away at work. In our relationship, we've been having problems because we have so little intimacy for a variety of reasons that sound more like excuses from her. Her parents are visiting, she's tired, she has to work the next day, her son is in bed with us, and a few others. And she also claims to be madly in love with my physical appearance, which I believe to be a lie. I generally say lovely things to her, offer her sound advice, and give her gifts as a gesture of affection. As a result, I've never treated her as if she were unimportant, and she knows the passwords to all of my social media sites. I don't have a password on my phone, so she can log in whenever she wants since I have nothing hidden. As a result of my recent breakup with a woman who had cheated on me while I was on drill, I no longer had any side girlfriends. On December 31st, my fiancé and her son participated in a local activity for children with the help of a friend, and her woman friend posted pictures of the event on social media, not my fiancé. When he saw the photos, he immediately phoned my fiancé. My fiancé said that he had called her and that they had spoken for a long period in an attempt to catch up but I had the impression that she wasn't telling me everything. She asked me to get her phone and do some work on it a few days ago. When she did, I noticed they were having a conversation in WhatsApp, and I went to read what they were talking about, and it was nothing out of the ordinary, but I then proceeded to enter my fiancé's chat with her two best friends. I knew this was wrong, but I had a feeling there was more going on, and that she wasn't telling the truth. In this conversation with her two closest friends, additionally, my fiancé said that she had told this guy the same thing about having S, but that they needed to wait until the proper time. My fiancé is completely unaware that I am aware of these discussions, and I haven't had the chance to sit down with her and discuss them. Although she's been extremely loud in her insistence that I should trust her, it's difficult for me to do so. When she's lying to me, what do you think you'd do in this situation? Would you be willing to call it quits? Inquire about the details of her explanations. Sorry for the long tale. Please accept my apologies for this. Update 1. The last time I checked, my original post had been made 28 days ago, and I'd like to submit an update. First and foremost, I'd want to express my gratitude to everyone who took the time to remark on the post and write personally to me via the comment section. On the 8th of January, I was set to meet with her and confront her about the text exchange between her and her ex-boyfriend. On the 7th of January, I was driving home from work and chose this two-lane road since it was the route I was used to taking at the time. Approximately 20 minutes from my house, at 2.30 a.m., a guy attempted an erroneous passing maneuver and crashed with me while I was driving my vehicle. The guy died on the spot, and I lost control of the truck as a result of the collision, and the semi ended up buried in a ditch behind a house. I had lost consciousness and I only regained awareness after a period of time when a motorist behind me and another individual called my name from my passenger door. In order to get help as fast as possible, I dialed 911 and the police, and then I phoned my girlfriend to let her know what had happened. When she came, she spent an hour driving a 20-minute trip, then approached me at the ambulance, went about to investigate the accident site, and then returned to her car to make a number of telephone calls. After 30 minutes, she told me that she needed to use the restroom and departed the area, leaving me to weep alone at the site of the crime. I found out she was talking to her ex-boyfriend instead of being with me a few days later when I needed her the most. As a result of the accident, she has been supporting me with my injuries in the days after the crash because I have been unable to use my right leg since the accident. As a consequence of this, I had injuries to my back, neck, and right arm, as well as mental health problems as a result of the driver's death. Physical therapy and professional assistance are being provided to me to deal with this. I am quite aware that my life is f-amazing. You all advised me to dump her. 
and I had planned to wait a few of weeks so that I might benefit from the aid she is offering me, but after what happened yesterday, I'm not going to wait any longer. I'm ready to move on. Continued investigation revealed my girlfriend and one of her closest friends making fun of my appearance. My GF telling her two best friends she wasn't sure she could have the same connection she had with her ex with me, and my GF notifying her ex of our problems. I was shocked. On the way there, she asked me what my psychologist had told me and I replied. My doctor asked me if you're willing to seek help to help the relationship, to which she became offended and began raising her voice at me. And ladies and gentlemen, at that moment, I told myself, F the help she's giving you, hit the F out. She was furious and I told her, hit the F out. We were about 30 minutes away from home, so I told her what I saw on her phone and that even though I love you, you don't love me and I cannot battle against the feelings you still have for your ex and that I need the ring back, and that you can go F the X now. We returned home, and she had a shower with her child, followed by me taking a shower and retiring to my room. When we get home, I'll give you an update on what happened. Update 2. The kindness of everyone has meant a lot to me, but coping with everything is taking its toll on me. My closest friend and family are in Texas, and I'm all alone here in Florida. This communication has been sent late due to the fact that I am unable to devote much time to it due to appointments with the psychologist, therapy sessions, and medical visits. We washed and went to bed early the next morning after returning from her son's therapy session the previous evening. After raising a disturbance and being a pain in my neck, he fell asleep very quickly, and she indicated a want to communicate with me, so we had a conversation. In other words, she was the one who asked me to explain why I'm continuously furious, why I said all of those things to her, what's wrong with me, and so forth. She was concerned about my health and wanted to know what was wrong with me. I informed her that I had witnessed her making fun of me with her friends, telling her friends she wants to sleep with her ex, and flexing to her friends that she had informed her ex that she wanted to have S with him among other things. I also informed her that I had witnessed her making fun of me with her friends telling her friends she wants to sleep with her ex, and flexing to her friends that she had informed her ex that she wanted to have S with him among other things. Her behaviors and those of her mother caused my second source of dissatisfaction with her. I am the man of the home and her kid, who is seven years old, does not respect me as a consequence. It was a shame that we were unable to have S as a result of her explanations. Nobody seemed to be worried by the fact that his youngster had behaved in an inappropriate manner. One thing I was informed was that my remarks on domestic concerns had been neglected among other things. The discussion began at 10 p.m., and finished at 4, 4 to 5 a.m., which meant that she never apologized for the messages she sent to her friends, and she attempted to make excuses for her behavior toward her ex-boyfriend throughout the night and into the following day. We discussed how being in a relationship is particularly tough when you are with someone but yet feeling alone, and she immediately agreed with my assessment of the situation. That I was just there to provide her a helping hand with money was my explanation. I told her that I had done my assignment and was ready to go on to the next phase of the process. When the narrator asks, how can you encourage me to put my trust in you and then do this nonsense? The narrator responds, I have told you, I answered emphatically. I'm referring to one of the town's hotels in particular at this point. I'm slowly but steadily taking my belongings from the home and putting them away in storage. So that's all I have to say for the time being. I'll be back on Friday with more information.